changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration to make you simply happy. It's Thoughtful Thursday, and I want to talk about the influence mothers have on their children, sometimes not even knowing that one little action can have a lifelong impact. Jim Dow wrote a story about this for a book called Chicken Soup for the Soul, Thanks Mom, that we published back in 2010. Even though I read this story that long ago, it has stuck with me ever since. The title of the story is A Lasting Lesson, which is quite appropriate. Jim tells us that it was vacation time, and he and his sisters and his parents were going on a trip. Jim was only six years old, and he was excited. They were going to Florida to visit his grandparents, and the trip would start with a train ride. Jim loved that train ride. They passed cities and farms, and there were plush reclining seats and a conductor calling out the names of the stops. And then they got to Florida, and there were more exciting trips on buses. More fun for a six-year-old boy. Jim remembers that one day his dad had somehow managed to get out of whatever excursion they were on, but Jim and his two older sisters were with their mom waiting for the bus. It arrived, and as their mother paid, the kids looked way to the back of the bus to see if their favorite seats were available. They were, and so the kids dashed to the back of the bus to claim the seats they loved, the same ones they always sat in when they took the bus at home up north. The very rear seat was like a bench. It spanned the width of the bus, and the kids liked to perch on that bench and look out the back window at the cars behind them and make faces at people. That seat was also nice and bouncy if the bus hit a bump in the road. So as their mom paid their fare, the three kids claimed the back seat, and then their mom came and sat in the row ahead of them. But then, instead of pulling the bus back out onto the street and continuing the route, the bus driver stopped the bus and came down the aisle to talk to them. He stopped in front of their little group and told them that they would have to move forward in the bus. Jim's mother responded that her children wanted to sit on that back seat and they were perfectly fine where they were and they were not moving. The driver heard her northern accent and explained that the back of the bus was not where they were supposed to sit. It was for other people, and white people were supposed to sit in the front. Jim's mother said they weren't moving, so the bus driver said the bus wasn't moving either. So there was a standoff. Then that idiot bus driver said he was calling the police, and Jim's mother finally gave in, totally disgusted with the driver and the whole ridiculous system. Jim believes that she only gave in because she didn't want her three children to have to deal with the police. She would have held her ground if she had been alone. And he says that several years later, he did see her stand up to some New York City cops she felt were acting improperly, refusing to back down even after they threatened to arrest her. At the age of six, Jim had absolutely no idea of the coming civil rights struggle. He actually thought that his mother was standing up to the bus driver because he wouldn't let them have the best seats on the bus and that those top-notch seats were being saved for someone else. The point that Jim was making in his story was that his mother, who ended up dying when Jim was only a teenager, made a lasting impression on him even though it took the wisdom of growing up for him to understand exactly what had happened that day. He said that he and his sisters took years before they understood the meaning of many of their mom's lessons. Many times, they didn't even realize that a lesson had been taught to them, not until they experienced more of life and could then understand something their mother had done. Jim says she taught mostly by example, by living her life in a way that was unwavering in its commitment to the values she held to be true and important. We learned about honesty, respect for others, the importance of education, we learned how to face disaster with resolve and hope, when to be afraid, and when to be fearless. All this we learned by watching this simple yet special woman live her life. We put a great quote at the beginning of that story in the book by Clarence Darrow, who said, 
As long as the world shall last, there will be wrongs. And if no man objected and no man rebelled, those wrongs would last forever. That's the lesson we can pass on to our children at any age, that we should be bold, speak up when we see something wrong, and teach our kids, by example, to do the same. Thanks for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. Come back tomorrow for Friend Friday. We're going to talk to Lori Harder, who is a very inspirational life coach who can help us figure out just how to make sure that we do stay true to our ideals and set that good example. She's a woman who helps people be true to themselves and become happier. And if you want to read some more great stories about mothers and grandmothers and parenting as we head towards Mother's Day, please visit our website, chickensoup.com, and scroll down to the bottom of the page to click on free newsletters. You can sign up there to receive a free Chicken Soup for the Soul story delivered to your email inbox every single day.